Ang daming banana. Baka pwede ako makahingi. Ayan o. May isa na. It's your first time to see banana tree, baby. I've seen a lot of banana trees. Can I have your hand? Please wear a mask. Now you should put it on. Alright, come on, we got to go. We got to go. Now back in 2015, co-fighter lead singer Dave Grohl broke his leg pretty badly on stage in Sweden, but being the trooper he is, he actually got it all shaped up, capped it up, and came back in seven chair and finished the show. And the dictionary word that you remember the court Look at that beautiful. How was the bottom over there? Baby, don't do that. See you. Carp. Uh huh. It's a lot of fish. Keep my phone back. Yeah. Those are fish. Look at her. They ain't even got. Look at the thing bumping over there. You need to go pick the fish out of that. for our guest on the upper deck under the camp through the Piedmont. Spring rain sometimes overflowed its red banks, but no protest was offered. The Indians were as used to its ebb and flow as they were to the bears wandering through wild pea vines and deer and buffalo grazing in the grass. The Indians called it Eswa Kerala, the Great River. In their own language, they were the Kawake Tala, the people of the river. The river, a seemingly unending source of water, fish, game, and pottery clay, was named after the people who lived by it, the Catawba. While the Catawba Indians lived in harmony with the river, their relationships with neighboring tribes were anything but tranquil. One horrendous day-long battle ended with 1,100 Cherokee and 1,000 Catawba. You gotta give them a long food memory. She don't know what ever saw. 
When the settlers arrived along the banks of the river, it proved disastrous to the Indians. Smallpox and other European diseases reduced the Catawba Indian nation from 5,000 strong in the 1600s to less than 400 in 1775. The settlers built cabins and farmed the land along the riverbanks. Ardent believers in God, education, and freedom, they took dim view of English meddling in their affairs. These pioneers faced enough problems without paying one new British tax after another. Before long, the settlers were drawn into a bitter and bloody conflict with the crown. An important local skirmish of the American Revolution took place at Cowan's Fort on the Catawba River on February 1st, 1781. General Charles Cornwallis tried to cross the muddy Catawba River in pursuit of victory. But Brigadier General William Lee Davidson and his scrappy band of Catawba Valley farmers were waiting for him. Recent rains had swollen the Catawba. The ford was rocky and the water at its shallowest was waist deep. The Americans proved to be fine marksmen as the British struggled against the turbulent current. Unfortunately, early in the battle, General Davidson suffered a gunshot wound near the heart and fell from his horse into the riverbank. The Americans held their ground and the British were successfully delayed. And the time gained allowed the American army to escape. General Davidson was a popular young general and a monument honoring him is located near the present site of Cowan's Ford Dam, the southern boundary of Lake Norman. The exact location of General Davidson's demise is under the waters of Lake Norman near the east end of the dam. No one living in the Catawba River Valley ever forgot the great flood of 1916. They watched trees tumble off the riverbanks and snakes scramble for higher ground. The Catawba River, already swollen from heavy rains, turned into a raging torrent on July 16th. The river rose 54.9 feet in two days, killing more than 50 people. Lake resident Bill Kale remembered watching a barn float by with chickens still sitting in their nests. Rebuilding would be a slow and painful process. The Southern Railway System began the arduous task of replacing dozens of bridges and countless miles of track. A Duke power plant is above water level. New bridges have to be built. But Bill Lee, who had designed the dam on Lake Norman, an avid sailor, tried to minimize these since they would hinder the progress of the sailboat. Some landed their fertile farms for pine forests that would front the future lake. Worthless land, said some. Others put off making a decision until the last possible moment, finding it hard to believe that when completed, Cowan's Ford Dam was a massive tribute to Bill Lee's engineering talent. While much of the dam is of earthen construction, there's enough concrete in it to build a sidewalk all the way to the Pacific Ocean. This concrete section is as high as a 13-story building, 130 feet, and 1,279 feet long. The entire earthen and concrete structure measures 7,387 feet in length. Those who predicted the lake would be an endless sea were right. Extending from the tail rays of Lookout Dam to Cowan's Ford Dam, its thermometer is 760 feet above sea level, 130 feet deep at its deepest point, and holds 3.4 trillion gallons. No wonder it took all of 1962 and 1963 to build. Named for Norman Atwater Cope, retired president of Duke Power, the lake is the culmination of a 60-year dream of hydroelectric development. Three generating plants on Lake Norman meet the needs of a steady...
a decision once the lake was finished, they were not going to sell property on the shorelines of it. But they had to get some money going in to help pay for the dam and the all the land they bought and were still purchasing. They decided to start leasing property on Lake Norman, the future Lake Norman. If you want a lease lot on Lake Norman, all you have to do is put your name in the hat. That Duke Power Company, if you own Lake Norman, are half and three quarter acre lots. That goes back to the old lease lots. The lease lot deeds were restricted, and all those restrictions do carry forward. Uh, you can't have, and the lease, uh, and all the property was uh, the Duke had, it was.